You talk about something called ontological shock yeah. in the book, which yeah. is, um, I mean, this is where people go through this. Yeah, I mean, I went through it. I mean, everyone that is fully exposed to this that comes from the Western world view goes through something like that. And all that means is that you have a worldview, which is your idea of what is, of what exists, what's possible. So if this doesn't fit what's possible, and yet you get hit with so overwhelming information that it's there, then that's a shock to your worldview. What this requires, again, is to deal with the paradox that there may be profound realities in the universe that don't obey the space-time laws. The people that I've spoken with so far today, the experiencers, and some of those in your book, what strikes me is that having this experience profoundly changes their lives. And it almost seems to a person they believe it changes them for the better. Is that a fair assessment? Well, it's certainly true uh, of the people you talked with and uh, many, many other people. And we certainly see that a lot with the people we work with. But it's it's not so straightforward. I mean, people originally may be very traumatized by this. I mean, it's, it's terrifying in many ways to suddenly be paralyzed and have strange lights and beings taking you, shocking your mind this way. And you can't talk about it. You don't know what's going on with your kids. I mean, it's a, it is a terrifying, traumatic kind of experience. But what happens in the way we work with people, we, we kind of hold the terror with them. We, we enter it in the sense of the mystery of it, the terror of it. And what often happens then is that something shifts, in other words, that there is a kind of transformation that occurs. It's a passing through the dark night of the soul that occurs. And then, then the people discover that they're part of some life-creating process or that they're brought closer to God, or they develop a sacred relationship to the earth, and they are not, they're more impatient with the way we live in society, the, the indifference we have about God, or about the earth, or about one another. So there are these kind of incredible shifts. And now, there are many other experiences that we've known throughout history that can create that sort of transform, transformative result, but they're slower. This is kind of like, uh, as uh, Karn, who you interviewed, said, this is the fast track. You know, it's sort of like instant transformation or quick transformation. And it's, it's, it's such a shock. It opens people so rapidly, in a sense, that, that they move more quickly if you stay with them through it than, than say, going and doing um, you know, Zen meditation for uh, several years. The talk um, about you know, this source of this being Almost, there's, there's, there seems to be a lot of religious overtones in a certain sense here. It's almost as if there's, this is a God kind of thing. I mean, what role does religion play in all of this, or does it? Well, organized religion, as we know it, plays very little role, because uh, often people have not had that kind of experience in connection with their original but churches. If you, but if you pray every day and believe that you're praying to some being up there, then isn't there... A profound relationship. Well, there's a kind of joke about this where it's okay if you reach out to God, but if God reaches you, then you're crazy. You know, it's it's uh, there. It's if it show if the divine shows up in some palpable, concrete, intense form. Now, I want to say something about religion here because you're right in this sense that if you crack that linear mind, you open to what the native people call being people of the circle, uh, then what tends to happen is you open to the divine, to the sacred, to a whole other reality. Now, what religion does, it knows of that reality, the, the great spiritual leaders have known of it, and then they try to decide for the group how that's going to be preached, or how that's going to be valued, or how that uh, is going to be organized, because they recognize that the power of those experiences. I have a kind of confidence that if you open to or widen the, to a, a larger reality or people awaken, then they'll open to the sacred, they'll open to a, a kind of deeper sense of the interconnected web of life, they'll become committed to stewardship of the earth, that kind of thing. But not, I don't have any idea of what the result might be. I mean, 
but it's a much more, it's very, at least it, it would open us to a very interesting universe if uh, we could accept that it was a universe that was filled with intelligence and life and beings, and these are one kind of beings, and it wouldn't be that sort of dead, cold universe that we've been taught we're in, in which uh, this, when this body dies, that's the end of it. I mean, it, it, were, it would be a much more interconnected kind of cosmos. There's sort of two levels in, in, in that sense that trying to help them with the energies and the pain and the trauma as individuals, but there's also to try to create a more hospitable cultural environment that they can live in and try to do something about the kinds of, of destructive processes that we're working on. So there's a political, social dimension to this as well as an individual clinical part. Is there any doubt in your mind that they have these experiences? I like the question because that's all I know, really, is how to work as a clinician. I, I, how to assess what people are saying, their, their honesty, their sincerity. I mean, my whole career is based on being able to try to assess whether people are telling the truth. Has anyone ever fooled me? Possibly. But, you know, overall, my sense is that they are being as truthful as they possibly can and that they've had experiences that are of great profundity for them. Now, what the source of those experiences is, what this is at, at root, is a mystery.